You're listening to episode 894 of the Father Bills Podcast. Welcome back. This week's episode, the homily, will be offered by Deacon Brett Edmondson, our permanent deacon at our parish, and is entitled, Leading with Love, given on the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time, 2023. Good morning, everybody. Confrontation. Who likes having to confront somebody? Oh. There's one in every crowd. (laughs) I will admit to you guys, I hate confrontation. Um, I'll do it when I have to, but I hate it partly, I think, because it goes against my natural inclination, partly because I'm just honestly not very good at it, right? I frequently make a mess of it. Uh, Maybe some of you do too. But this seems to be the theme of our readings today, and especially of our gospel, confrontation. Maybe we could say constructive confrontation or loving confrontation. So let's see what we can learn together. And there are two things in particular that I want to look at with you this morning. So the first one is this, context, the context. So these instructions that Jesus gives about confronting somebody who's harmed us or who's making poor choices, it's important to note they come right after the parable of the lost sheep and right before Jesus' admonition to forgive not just seven times, but 77 times. So the whole point of the larger passage from which our gospel today comes is reconciliation. Reconciliation. And that's important for understanding tonight, not tonight, today's gospel, right? Whenever we confront our neighbor, our motivation, at least as much as possible, needs to be reconciliation. Healing the hurts, mending the wounds, repairing the breach, not winning the argument, not punishment or humiliation, not justifying ourselves. Reconciliation. Now, I don't know about you, but when I have to have hard words with somebody, it's frequently not about reconciliation, right? More often, it's about my ego, my need to be right, my need to justify myself, my need to defend my opinion or my politics or my faith, all of which can easily become stand-ins for my ego or my need to punish right? Aggressively or passive aggressively. A nasty email, being aloof or snarky, giving somebody the silent treatment, spreading gossip under the guise of, quote, just venting, right? Well, Jesus says none of those are legitimate. None of those are legitimate because none of those make the situation better. None of those create an opening for deeper understanding or real reconciliation to happen. I came across an old proverb that says, whenever you're about to criticize, ask yourself three questions. Is what I'm about to say true? Is what I'm about to say kind? And at this moment, is what I'm about to say helpful? So is it true? Is it kind? And at this moment, is it helpful? And if you can't say yes to all three, then it's probably better to wait until you can say yes. Because if you can't say yes, then your goal is likely something other than reconciliation. And reconciliation, not winning, is our goal. So that's point one. Point two, reconciliation requires a willingness to go out and seek the lost, not wait for them to come groveling back to us. So that means, for one thing, no brooding or nursing of grudges are allowed, right? We need to initiate reconciliation before things fester. However, and this is also important, we need to seek the lost where they are and not where we think they should be. Pope Francis talks about this in terms of accompaniment. Jesus today talks about it in terms of treating someone as a Gentile or tax collector. And when we hear that, it sort of sounds like he's saying exclude them, right? Shun them. But that's not how Jesus treated Gentiles or tax collectors, is it? He didn't reject them. He didn't exclude them. He didn't ignore them until they came to their senses. No, he ate with them. He befriended them. He didn't even say, change your life, and then I'll hang out with you, right? He led with love. 
and he let that love become the ground out of which real change and real reconciliation could grow. So that doesn't mean that what we're advocating here is an easy kind of tolerance that ignores the truth, right, or that is afraid to speak the truth, at least as best we can understand it. We don't do anybody any favors by being less than frank with them. But unless we know that we care about them and not just our opinion, unless they know that we care about them without condition, unless they know that our relationship with them means more to us than our need to be right, we don't really have a prayer of being heard, do we? I'll give you a little illustration. Years ago, I worked at the downtown chapel uh, with folks who were chronically homeless and addicted and mentally ill. One of the organizations that I sometimes worked with that I really admired was called JOIN, and they were really, really good at helping people address their problems and get off the streets. And I remember one day talking to one of their counselors on the phone and asking her what she thought made her and her colleagues so effective at what they did. And her answer, it wasn't what I expected. So it wasn't the resources her organization had. It wasn't skillful counseling, though they were skillful counselors. It wasn't the information they gave people. It wasn't even holding people accountable. She said, those are all important things. But she said, what was most important, what was most important was relationship. Being willing to become a friend to somebody. Learning their story. Listening to them without any intention of trying to change them. Trying as much as possible to see their life through their lens. Because she said, unless you start with friendship, there's no hope of real or lasting change because the other person will always suspect manipulation. They'll always suspect you're after something. They'll always suspect you want something from them. And none of us like being manipulated. So when it comes to having hard words with somebody, what does that mean for us? Well, I think it means we need to be willing to listen without planning our response or formulating our counter-argument. And I think it needs, means that we need to be humble enough to admit that we may not have the whole picture, to consider the possibility that there are things we don't know or understand. God forbid. It means maybe even recognizing that there are things we may be wrong about. And it's not that there's never a time for argument or speaking the truth, even boldly, but until there's trust, until that other person feels that we really care about them and that we really hear them, arguments are only going to drive the wedges deeper. Reconciliation is our goal, not the need to be right. You know, rightly or wrongly, there's a perception out there that Christians don't know how to listen, that we're all about rules and morality, but not about people. Father Mike Schmitz cites a recent survey of young adults in which the four words that most commonly come to mind when non-believers hear the word Christian are judgmental, bigoted, elitist, and hypocritical. Judgmental, bigoted, elitist, and hypocritical. Now, I don't know that that's necessarily true, at least all the way true, but there's a reason those perceptions are out there, isn't there? Friends, in a world that's all in on judgment, condemnation, cancellation, we need to be a sign of something that's truer and better, but also far more difficult, the work of reconciling. So this week for your homework, what I would invite you to do is look around your circle of family and friends and coworkers and ask yourself, with whom are you at odds? And then, if it seems like it's true, if it seems like you can do it kindly, and if it seems like it would be helpful, approach them. Approach them. Approach them and really listen to them. And begin the hard work of reconciliation. Thank you again for listening to this episode of the Father Bills podcast. And again, a big thank you to Deacon Brett Edmondson for 
uh, offering the homily this week. I will be offering the next week's homily. Uh, but in the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, just go to my website, fatherbill.org, F-R-B-I-L-L.org. There you can see what's going on. Basically, my Friday reflection or previous podcasts like this podcast, the homily podcast, Father Bill's podcast, the Mysteries of the Mass podcast, uh, the Pilgrim cast. I'm trying to remember what they all are. And also my social media connections, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, formerly known as Twitter now, called X, which is a strange name, but whatever. <laughs> and if you have any questions, go there or comments. Feel free to email me right from the webpage itself, fatherbuild.org. In the meantime, may God bless you and have a great week. Bye-bye.